Welcome, welcome, welcome to Quarantine with Styles, aka Driving with Styles. I'm back to normal. I'm ready. Unlike last time. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are joining. Um it's gonna be a good show. And um it's some interesting times right now. Uh, everything that's going on in the country, everything that has happened since the pandemic has has started and now the George Floyd thing has been some trying times, some some long days and nights for, for some people. And lo and behold, uh, got the information that yesterday that uh, Bubba Wallace was going to have a, um, a Black Lives Matter car, which, man, I would have never imagined. Let's start off with that. Then, <laughs> come this morning, that was another great announcement. Now, I was never a, um, a NASCAR guy. I was probably more, no probably, I was, I was more a Formula One guy. Well, let me, let me start, I forgot to say, uh, you guys are welcome to join me. I got my Twitter account right under me, at vstyle17. You can tweet me today if you have a question, comment, just want to say what's on your mind, get something off your chest. Or you can click on the link in a tweet I sent about 15 minutes ago. Or it's in my bio. You click on the link, you can join the show live if you would like. But that was what I was saying. When I was young, I used to watch ESPN all day. And ESPN, to me, I loved it better, better in the in the 80s. Because they played sports all they broadcast sports all day, uh, cliff diving, billiards, snookers, <laughs> curling, everything. So I used to wake up early. I used to watch Formula One. And my guy was Ayrton Senna. I'm, I'm a, you know, as a young kid, you want the guy who wins. He was Brazilian. And to me, I, I, I like this car. No reason why, but I just, I... I was drawn to him. So I was an Ayrton Senna fan. Then the IndyCar, I used to watch that on ABC. Kind of like it. ABC was was the the joint too. Uh, because we used to be able to watch real boxing. I mean, we saw all the major events when I was young. There was no pay-per-view. Uh, the pay-per-view came out later. But in the 80s, we used to see the... the uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard fight, the Marvin Haglers, those are the, that weight class is mine. I used to like that weight. I wasn't a big heavyweight guy. So, um, to see that they are going to ban the Confederate flag has made me think about going to NASCAR. Now, I'm not sure how they're going to police that. That seems some, like something that's going to be very difficult to police. Because what are you gonna kick somebody off the track, off the infield during the race? Or are you gonna give them a ticket? Or are you what's the ramification? Because someone is gonna try you. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You are going to get tested. And it's gonna be interesting to see how they handle that situation. It's it's a step in the right direction for, for them to even think about that and to try to make that happen. It's just going to be interesting to to see that. I just never, to see how they're going to police. I've, I've never in my wildest dream. This is up there with Kentucky winning 10 games and being, as I see right now, a traditional, true candidate for winning the SEC East. For, I can say at least for the next three years, they are going to be in the running. For the SEC um, East title. Not sure. I, I really like this year, as you guys know. If you follow me for any time, I really like the team this year. I like everything I've seen. I like everything I've heard thus far. We still get we still get great talent from the high school ranks to, to come join the program. I so this year to me, 
the the, the chances are heightened with a, he, a healthy Terry, but I think the the there's a, still a chance with uh with a healthy a healthy soil. Uh, that's how confident I am, I am in this team. We 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 bring back one of the best offensive line group in the country and that's all you need on offense if you can if you can take care of the trenches that puts you in a big positive position to win a lot of games so because of that i i, I had 11 and 1 i had 11 and 1 in what february i think i sent out that tweet which i got <laughs> it's amazing how in twitter how I guess it's that six degrees of separation. One tweet goes and somebody retweets it and it gets to people whom you have no idea who they are. I got all kinds of, you're a clown, you're stupid, you backwoods Kentucky guy, which I'm not a Kentucky guy. I'm a Louisiana guy. You don't even know me there. At least check out my bio. <laughs> but I got a lot of that naysayers and I just can't wait. And if you don't know me well, I'm very petty. And I bookmark every single troll that come in on, on my post. And believe me, I will revisit that when we win these games. I promise you on that. Now, I said last broadcast about my cynical nature and how uh, Mitt Romney had me change that a little bit and I am I've changed a little bit <laughs> I'm not gonna lie uh, but this dabble Sweeney thing bothers me a little bit and here's the deal it's it's so hard right now to really know how to deal with some of this stuff because I don't believe deep in my heart that Dabo is racist. I, I really don't. I I just don't. But the way he handled his situation compared to how Kurt Ferentz handled his situation to me brings me some pause. Is he tone deaf? Deaf if he does he really understand? Is he so stubborn that he cannot apologize? Is, it, is he so set in his ways that he can't see the other side? So Kurt France handled his situation as hit, uh, trying to get a, as, as they say, trying to get ahead of the story. He made a statement. He apologized so to speak. He put Doyle, Chris, uh, that was his strip coach he's known, who's been, I think, on the staff since he's been there, has done some things that a lot of people, it's interesting that a lot of people don't understand that you might not have a certain intent, but your actions might be different. It's like, I don't know if you guys saw in, in the Tennessee house that a guy said this other black rep, he said he was, I guess the black rep wasn't ready for his time. And the head of the, I guess, head of the house of reps, I can't remember his name, said he's probably looking for the Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe. And... It doesn't seem like a, a big deal for, but I will say this, for black people, it's a dog whistle. And to me, the way Kirk Ferentz handled it head on, formed a committee, he heard his ex-players, his former players, because I mean, it's, we we talked about this on the locker last night. Again, I see every episode. I I plug 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 my show our show with uh, Anthony White 
And um, at the locker 411, you can follow us Tuesday and Thursdays, 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we talked about it last night on that show. It's, it's, the times are difficult. And I, I don't, like I said, I don't know the intent. I don't think that people don't understand that, that even though they're not intending to sound a certain way, but sometimes they do. And Dabo is giving me pause because I just don't understand why he just can't apologize, why he can't come out and say, I wish I would have handled it differently. Now, the problem is we don't know how it's handled behind closed doors. And that's the problem I have with all these situations is that Dabo could be handling this thing behind closed doors better than or uh, more upfront than we are seeing it in the public. So the question to me is always do we do we know all that's going on? It's kind of like this Lynn Bowden thing that happened today. It's like you have to sort of wait and see where until all the information comes out. And we're in this, this age of people trying to get headlines and trying to get information out before someone else. And how can I honestly say what is in Dabo's heart? Although I still think the wearing the football matters still <laughs> right now. That football matter shirt says a lot. I know, is he is he that unaware of what's going on? I don't know, but I guess one thing we can say is the proof is in the pudding. It's all about his players, and if his players, past and present, are coming to his defense, what can we really say? And the public says, except that the visual is not the best. And, you, you know, then I come back, as like I said, I've checked myself with my cynical nature. Is it up to the media or the public to really condemn him as much as we are, which I personally think is valid but if his players feel a different way who whom are with him every day whom have been with him over three years three years or more we have to kind of trust them a little bit or more than our belief system um i still think there are some things that need to be cleared up for me but who am I? <laughs> so, I just like the way Kirk Ferentz handled his situation. It didn't take him, it, and it didn't take him a week. And for me, from an outsider looking in, if it's gonna take you time, which, like Jerry Jones, if is he's gonna is he gonna come out with any type of comment? But if you're gonna wait that long. Your addressing the situation should be almost flawless because you've had some time to think about it. You've had some time to digest it. You've had some time to look at the feedback, positive and negative. And for me, he, he sent out this 14 minute video and to me, it didn't wrap it up. In a, in a neat little tight bow. But that's just to me. I um, don't know how others feel, but I would have felt a little bit better if he addressed it sooner and now waiting this long. Because who, 
if you wait this long over a week, you it should be you 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 should be able to wrap your thoughts up really well. Because like I said I said last week, how and you cannot dismiss an apology if the is the if the apology is sincere. No matter how long it takes. Some people take longer than others. Like I said, it's gonna be interesting to see what how Jerry Jones deal with this with this situation. It's gonna be interesting to see how the players deal with this situation. It's gonna be interesting that so we're gonna have NBA games first. And they are a little more oh, they are a little more or less Concern, not concerned, a little more, a little less. Yeah, I'm gonna say concerned about addressing so, uh, social injustice during the game, or or using their platform. So basketball is coming back. How are they going to show their concern? Because if basketball. protest and uh, show their support of the current situation. Will that give the NFL players more belief that they can do it during the NFL games? No, the, the NBA is going to be the benchmark for a lot of these major sports. And it's gonna be interesting to see what, what, what happens during this NBA uh, end of the season, the start of the NBA back, how they address this situation during the game. Because there will be no fans in the, in the, in the seat. So there is no concern about fans doing something crazy if you, in essence, kneel, let's say. But I don't know, do they play the national anthem with the players on the court? I'm not sure. Which then, man, now this brings me to that. Like, why can't the NFL go back to that? Wouldn't that cure a lot of the, the issues? Why do the NFL players have to come out during the national anthem? Why can't they stay in the locker room like they used to? If they do that, I believe it will, it will eliminate a lot of the issues, right? I mean, just keep them in the locker room. Have that national anthem play earlier in the habit. So, and I'm just talking off the top of my head. Why don't we just have them play it after oh, the first warm-up? When everybody warms up before the game, the team warm up. Usually, the team goes back in the locker room. So they warm up. They have that last. Every team does. They have that offensive team with defense. They go from by the forty yard line in, and then at the end, everybody huddles up and blah blah and do whatever their chant is. Then when they all run into the locker room. They all have a last whatever. I don't know how. I can't remember how long we were in the locker room. But we go in the locker room, have our last instructions from the coaches, then we come back on the field. Well, then, then there the offense or defense is announced, and then the game starts. But why not do that? Right after that warm up, all the teams go back in the locker room, play the, the national anthem. Then, then when the players come on the field, they're announced. Then we play football. That seems like a very simple. Solution that would make everybody happy. Now the fans who are against the kneeling won't have to see it. The fans who love to go get a beer and go to the bathroom to the next night, they can still do it without someone saying something to them. <laughs> so I say we go back to that. 
I can't wait personally for this NBA deal. It's um somebody's gonna be mad. And I can see Memphis being the team that's gonna be mad. I'll say this. I don't think whoever wins the eighth seed in the West will beat the Lakers. But I have a feeling that they're going to give the Lakers a little bit more trouble than the Lakers would have had if the season wasn't stopped. And I don't care how you said, when you start getting older, your body doesn't respond like it did when you was 28. On a Braun case, he came in the league at what, 19, 18, 19. So an extra one or two games can play a difference when it comes to the Western Conference Finals. I'm just, that's just how it is. Now, the great thing about it to me is, and people see it as a negative, these guys are staying in shape. I, I have no doubt that these guys have stayed in shape during this off time. No doubt. The issue I have is no one should be complaining about the NBA starting quickly except the front office because there's a quick turnaround for the draft and then getting the new players acclimated, which the rookies would have had, won't have the training camp that they normally would have. Are they going to have the Summer League or whatever, let's just call them the preseason in the NBA with the summer leagues that they used to have in the summer, are they going to still have those games? That's the question for the young guys. But the veterans, I mean, you guys have been off for, what, since March? And you're not going to start playing again until, is it after July? So your body should be healed. Then you're gonna you're gonna play a shortened game, which is to me similar to your preseason. And then you go get back into the the new season, middle of November, end of November, Thanksgiving. I think you gotta have it a little bit before Thanksgiving if you. Want. I know the Christmas game is more of a highlight for them than Thanksgiving, but still you can have at Thanksgiving weekend you can have games however they usually schedule. Uh, so you don't want to you don't want to have your first couple of games during a time where everyone can see the game so if they start the middle of November that'd be great or they can start on my birthday November 1st that's a great that's the greatest day ever November 1st is the best day ever man and um, they can start on that day they can make it a Van Hiles day Van Hiles kickoff <laughs> uh, so it's going to be interesting. I'm a Laker fan. I hope the Lakers win. But some people are going to be mad. It's like in the East, if the Sixers get healthy, is um, does the Celtics, they they getting um, their players back? Are they going to threaten the Bucks? There's some interesting things. That can happen. Now, obviously, they say KD's not coming back, so the Nets have no chance. But it's going to be interesting. And I I love drama. And I can't wait to see it for myself. So, that's all I got for tonight. But I got a good video today clip that I want to show. And... Once you see it, you will know. And I'm going to talk through this because this is almost like a football play. So here we go. <laughs> I got to put myself in, in here on this one. <laughs> now, I want you to watch it. I'm going to just replay this thing a lot. I want you to see this is when you know as a player that you got the rest of the team psyched out. Now he, <laughs> that's one of the best stiff arms I've seen. But I want you to look at the other opponents, the teammates. There is no sense of urgency to tackle this guy. 
That number six had no. He had no. <laughs> he had no intentions on tackling. He right now is walking. He's like, I don't want. I don't want any of that. But look at the guy next to him. I don't. I don't know his number. But these are the. I don't know his number. I can't see his number in the back. But the guy right comes into the screen right here. Now he was close to. He was. He was right next to number six. And he has no accelerations right now. He's like, forget this. Now, what's the guy who tries, who has the angle at the end? Because I know there's a, a extra point or something for for putting the ball on the, on the end line. He's like, nah, I'm just gonna show coach that I'm in the film, but I'm really not gonna do. It. I'm just. <laughs> this is. This guy has this team psyched out, and if you look at his teammates, I guess they're just. A bigger group of players because the guy behind him right there he's just as big too <laughs> I could I could watch this over and over again I'm gonna watch it one more time and then I would <laughs> I would go back to the show this is crazy all right guys so that's <laughs> I have seen that at least I mean, I seen him, saw it right there. What about six times? I might have seen that a few hundred times because it gets me every time. That that <laughs> that's called being in a team's head and them not giving the best effort. It's as period as that. I don't know the setup of that league. Uh, I don't know if that was high school. I don't know, but I saw that clip and I recorded that the right away. So, appreciate you guys watching and joining. Hope you guys have a good rest of your night. And I will see you on Friday.